Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for August 15, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in council. There are wonderful citizens and our administration. Uh, Ms. Perner, if you call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Preston. Father, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. We thank you for the wonderful weather, Father. Lord, we pray that you be in this meeting and that thy purpose will be done. Bless our citizens, our, our first responders, and troops overseas and at home. In Jesus' name. Amen. What do we see the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all? Randy had the fourth Randy Randy Randy's the shoes. Yeah, with me. It's very appetizing. Go slow, it's really hard on the team. Okay. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Um, we'll need to do the action on the regular scheduled council meeting minutes for uh, August 1st, 2022. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Any discussion on those minutes, Council? Yes. Sure. The uh, second line down after the roll call. I, I fixed it. I, yeah. I caught it earlier. Yeah, it had Lindsay twice and Mr. Cook on there. Not at all. There you go. So they, the ones being turned in are correct. Okay. Is that all, Mr. Cook? Thank you, Thank you sir. Anyone else? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Barber. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Councilman Lindsay? Stay, wasn't here. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Minutes accepted 601. Excuse me, thank you very much. Yes. And then moving on to city manager's report. Hey, Mr. Bridge? Thank you, member, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. And we'll start off with the city manager reports. Um, looks like our is not here, you might be on a call. So I'll just give a verbal of the first page here. Uh, so the Clark County Sheriff's Department, they patrolled uh, 5,328 miles. They took 151 calls, uh, 31 reports, 25 assists, 12 criminal arrests, four felony arrests, two misdemeanor arrests, and six warrants, 49 traffic stops, uh, 32 traffic warnings, 17 citations. 470 business checks, uh, code enforcement follows up to zeros, and then traffic cash crashes one. Um, and then he goes on with the monthly stats for each deputy. Uh, so any questions, I'd be happy to write them down and attempt to answer them and get them back to the appropriate department. Well, the only question I have is uh, under the business checks mm -hmm. each month, just curious why it increased did it change what they do, or did we add that many more businesses? Or if you look through there, in January there was 183, and then February there was 387, 618 in March. I was just sure May was 733, 622 in June. I'm just curious. Sure. As to why the number fluctuates? Well, and why it drastically jumped up in some of those months. And then went down some of them. Okay, yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah, I'm just okay, right Did they change your procedure? Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. And back to you, sir. And moving on to the city manager report, our fire and EMS report presented by Chief Preston. Mayor, council, citizens, 
For the month of July, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 98 EMS calls in the city, 10 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to four fire-related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls uh, to Pike Township and three mutual aid calls to Bethel Clark. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments for Chief? No, right, sir. Apparently, I think you are doing a good job. Now, let's say you are, so thank you for the reports. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the uh, City Manager Report, our Finance Report, presented by our Finance Director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Council members of the community that are here tonight, this is our July Finance Report. The uh, revenue that we collected during the month of July was $928,220.16, and the expenditures for the month of July were $559,000. $620.18. So collected year to date on the revenue is $5,599,755.46. And expenditures year to date are $4,386,664.36. The statement of cash, again, the beginning balance, first of the year, is $6,014,000. $278.47. We have an ending balance to date of $6,365,549.25. For the income tax collection, CCA has collected on our behalf for the month of July $186,332.59, and we're still running about 11% higher this time than previous uh, July of 2021. On the poll report for the month of July, we took in in revenue $20,437.37 for a year-to-date total of $80,100.14. On the expenditures for the poll for the month of July was $25,293.30 for a year-to-date expense for the poll of $75,726.89 and is still running a profit of $4,373.25. On our mayor's court for the month of July, the fines and court costs, they received $664, and the account is reconciled and in the back. I don't have the expenses, they're included in the expense reports. I can entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? <coughs> Apparently not. So, thank you for the report. Thank you. And the motion? So moved. This is for the finance report. Yes. Second. Second by Mr. Bond. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Finance report accepted 7 0. Mr. Mayor? Sir. Who would you accept the mayor's report? Sir. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggles. Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Mr. Bridge, real quick, if you don't mind, I want to jump back one step. I knew I was forgetting something when you were under the fire chief earlier. Uh, you know, always we always focus on pay attention to negative feedback and you know it's hits social media and whatnot. I saw I'd seen the post earlier today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I won't say names, but they were praising the job that the department did on a on a run you guys were on. Uh, I'm assuming yesterday or sometime over yes, the weekend. Yeah, yesterday you mean. So uh, it's nice to read positive feedback and, and people letting us know that you and your team are doing a great job. So thank you for that. It was nice to nice to see that. It's, you know, you don't get to see too many comments on social media about city your city officials or anything related. So it was nice to see it. So uh, you know, thank you to you and, and please pass that on to the okay. rest of your team. Back to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, moving on with the, uh, thank you for a great report, Ms. Harris. And moving on with the city manager report, our service report, presented by Mr. Kiko, our service director. 
Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Well, we'll start off uh, under our public works department. Um, the big thing is we have replaced all our fall protection mulch around all the playground equipment through all our parks, um, everyone. So if you look out there, you'll see everything is all topped off. And that's including even the few old pieces that we've kept along um, over here by the open shelter, by the tennis courts. So we got that completed on Friday. Uh, finally did, and the date on your report at 7-Eleven is incorrect. They were supposed to start today. Um, however, their uh, driver was not able to make it in today. So they're starting tomorrow or Wednesday for our street sweep. And then they'll be back in the fall. And I am also looking at uh, some contractors uh, for sales and maybe working with other um, government agencies of maybe going in on a cooperative uh, possible deal for sweeping. It could be a purchase, could whatever it could be, but we're trying to not do this alone just because of the, the possible expense. But I am looking into that and actually spoke with one of them here um, this past Friday. Uh, working with the contractor on the bike path and all that right away brush clearing. Um, I didn't get a chance to get over there, but they were supposed to start today on Hillside Drive for a, a property owner who wants to get his privacy fence up, but um, uh, that was supposed to start today. Uh, everything's going pretty good with the water department as far as, uh, you know, we're just trying to keep up with some guidelines, stuff with the EPA right now, valve exercising as uh, we had needed to do with a hydrant that got hit. Uh, we're preparing data metric information and plant maintenance. We do have a sanitary survey coming up sometime soon within the next six months, and that's when the EPA comes in and does a full-blown inspection of our um, of the house, the infrastructure, towers, everything, and, and grades us accordingly. Uh, sewer department, uh, we did uh, receive delivery of one of our secondary clarifiers that is on site. We're awaiting the contractor uh, to finish up a couple projects they have in the area, and then they'll be in sometime around early to mid-September to get that installed. I am working with the uh, engineer right now on the other clarifier to put that out for bid. And our uh, other clarifier, it's, it's, a, it's crazy down at Wastewater right now with the amount of projects we got going on. But it, it's a good thing we're getting everything um, fixed up, a lot of our old stuff. Uh, let's see. Of course, ADA, uh, things have been completed. Still waiting on our CDBG grant application for Fenwick. I've not heard back on that. But I think it was a, it was a pretty good shot, but no guarantee. And then um, that is all I have on that report. Oh, and then stumps. As you'll notice, you're starting to see stumps being removed up throughout the park. We're finally getting to get some of those taken out. We do know there's some in right away that we sometimes can't get a backhoe in there and dig them out, but we're gonna get a stump grinder here probably this fall and go around and, and get some of those out. Uh, before I move on to the other water, wastewater information, any questions on my regular report? I just had one on the uh, street sweeping, and I don't know if it was just timing and how it fell this year. Uh, moving forward, say in 23, would it be better to do our street sweeping like one early spring after winter? It was supposed to be done then. Okay. Not this, yeah, yeah, this has been, yeah. Uh, I've had to move up a chain with the company, just gotcha. let me know. So. Okay. Yeah. It has. It's uh, and there's really only two companies in Springfield and ourselves and other uh, local municipalities use the same two. Same one we're using, Troy. Tip City, you know, they a lot of them use that as their same company, so yeah. they're busy. They are shorthanded. I do give them that, but you know, we're still we got an agreement signed and yeah. you know ready to go. Okay. And I just one more, Mr. Kitko, um, just a general question because I think we discussed some things like cemetery grass cutting. I don't know if you were here for that meeting or not, but uh, in general, in the summer, and I'm sure it varies depending on workload or if you have multiple lines <laughs> breaking the water or whatever. It may I mean, what is what is your biggest consumption of man hours in the summer? Oh, it's mowing for sure. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> Mow, no matter who it is, I mean, it's mowing. Okay. We have a lot of grass for the city our size. Okay. Yep. Right. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to the water and wastewater information. So this is a very kind of somewhat high level, maybe medium level information to kind of give you a rough uh, a rough look at what we have. Water fund, we have about 2,100 accounts. Our average daily flow is about 550,000 gallons. Our plant capacity is 1.2 million gallons a day with a design of 1.5. With that design, uh, they would take part of the wall out, bring a new filter in, and uh, we would be up to 1.5. So right now, we're running just below 50%. And the reason our, our, we have the plant like we do is based on the original Twin Creeks build. We built the plant. Um, July of 26 is our last payment. It's a half payment. 
on our water plant loan. So we're almost there. Uh, that total for a year is $216,000. So it's 20%, over 20% of our annual budget for water. So um, it won't take long once that loan's paid off to start bringing some things back in and get, you know, fixing some other things without that, um, uh, with the stress of having to find funds. So just letting you know about that. Um, and then the old Tecumseh YMCA extension of about $6,800, that comes off in July of 25. So, you know, that'll be in our $7,000 a year that, you know, will not be spent. But as you can see, our current revenue, we, we, we bring in about a million dollars a year. Now, our expenses, if you look at month to month or year to year, they vary. It could be 900,000, it could be a million, it could be over a million. This year, we're gonna be over. We've already had some big projects and we got another one because our pitless adapter on both four uh, broke. And that alone is gonna be close to $30,000 for just that one well uh, repair that's coming. It'll be coming to you guys here soon. So that, that fluctuates. So right now, our profit margin on water is not great. It's a bonus of what we bring in. If we have a good year, um, you know, it's a small margin. If we have like this year, it'll probably be on the opposite side. Um, but we did a current daily flow of about 550,000 gallons. And as you see, there's the four um, possible developments listed there, which would put us at about a total full build at eight to 10 years, about a million 33. So the water plant will easily be able to handle a full build out. Uh, the only thing that will be common sometime in there would be another water tower over on that side, just for storage. Um, you know, we. Are, you always want that little bit of extra, and we're talking another tower probably somewhere in the 500,000 gallons to another million gallon tank. So, um, but again, in that paragraph there below, uh, you know, once those loans come off, that will really help us, um, you know, start working on our reserve account down the road. Moving on to wastewater, we have about 2,350 accounts. Wastewater does go outside of the corporation limits. We do the golf course, we do uh, houses north of the golf course, we do uh, uh, Quail Ridge, we do Northampton, we do the Chateau, the mobile home park Chateau States, we do the three mobile home parks on Honey Creek, Brookwood, up on 235, and we do Northampton itself and Northwestern Local School District. So we do get a lot from them, and so basically our daily flows are about 650,000. It is a 1MGD plant with a design of three. Um, in here in 2023, we are performing an analysis or design survey to see what we need to do to do half of the developments, portion of it, full build out, so we can stage this properly and not build something and something not come along and then you're paying for a loan for 20 years with no uh, revenue to pay for that, that new build. Um, again, our current revenues now for wastewater are really looking good. The rate increases have uh, being able to bring the additional funds in um, to cover some of these repairs that we're currently doing along with ARPA funds and stuff. So that has helped, helped a little. Uh, with the flow being 650, you add the four other um, develop, possible developments and we're at about 1,133. So we would be in eight to 10 years over the current capacity of the, of the plant at full build. Okay, so that's why we're gonna look at a design now for full build and partial and then in about five years, when we're getting close to that, they'll be able to put this equipment in. If it keeps going that direction, put it in, and then uh, we'll be able to handle pretty much anything. Because what they're going to do is make it a, probably a two million a gallon a day plant. It won't be like a million two just to barely cover it. So the, we'll look at this as a future probably plus some. And then in, in the paragraph they're stating, basically they have the same YMCA. Um, it will come off as well. Um, we do have a couple loans that are through New Carlisle Federal for some other clarifiers. Those will be coming off of about $120,000 that will be, I think I have, or $112,000 after next year will be coming back into the kitty for wastewater as well. So um, hopefully when that time comes and we're ready to build, there's, there, there will be some grant and then there will be some local funds and not really having to worry about a loan. The goal is to not do a loan. If we do, zero interest and it will be a small one. And then, um, again, I talked about the, the case study that we'll be doing for that build, but um, it was, that's just kind of in a nutshell um, of the revenues I put in there. Granted, that does not look at eight years from now what a rate could be, you know, where it might be. This is just using today's rates and um, using the same amount of accounts to um, put the average usage of whatever homes might come in.
And that is all I have with that. I get to entertain questions on that as well. Mr. Chicken, on the uh, wastewater, when do you think I uh, take it back from the uh, water, from the water uh, department? When do you think that will have to start being looked at to build and a guesstimate of what it may cost? For what department? For the water department. For the tower? Yeah. Um, we're probably... Well, the tower and the new uh, well, and at some point we're going to have to find another well for it, too. So we're, we're already, we're already, working we're already kind of looking at ideas okay. right now that are, that are very potential in the works. Um, the well will be get done this year. Okay. Um, we'll be bringing an ordinance because it's over Mr. Bridges' spending limit. Um, we'll be getting that, that uh, pitless adapter um, replaced. Um, but as far as the tower, you're probably looking somewhere in about five, six years. It, it, it all depends on the speed and how fast this goes. Uh, towers are about a year. So once you go for design, you're about a, from design phase to construction, about a year. And so go ahead. It, it, we just don't know specifically when, but we'll be ready okay. as the progression goes when to put it in. And, and the cost of the tower would be a million it, it, it's gonna be, million? It'll be well over a million. Over a million? Oh, yeah. Okay. And that would be... Through grants and stuff. And uh, there'll be some oh, oh, oh yes, I'll be applying for some, but yeah, mm -hmm. uh, multiple ways of funding. And then, is there any uh, in, any uh, builds need to happen with the wastewater plant, or will it handle? Uh, it won't handle everything according to your numbers here. So, what will have to be done with the wastewater plant? Will it have to be increased in size to handle the uh, one point uh, a million one hundred thirty three? gallon per day well that's what that study will be here in 23 okay. we'll tell them here's each development here's what could potentially come from it here's their best guess of uh, how fast they'll go and they'll say okay here's what type of treatment processes you have and here's how fast that you may need to, when you need to be ready to start adding these uh, other pieces to it okay. All right, thank you. yeah the study will tell us everything in the wastewater side okay thank you sir Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. I just have one for you. The, Mr. Lindsay had already kind of touched on it. I was just going to ask where we were on a new uh, well well site. Yeah, uh, well sites are, the funny thing about them is they're hard because you have to have a 300-foot isolation radius around the well. So you need 600 feet from one edge through the well to the other edge of nothing can be in it. Yeah. You have to own it or have a perpetual easement with no structures, no sanitary lines, no sewer, no nothing. Like the tank at the ball field that sits above ground there at the concession stand, it was grandfathered. They do not like it, but because it's above ground and they maintain it, they kind of, you know, don't look at it real super hard. Right. But no, we are we are looking at some potential land that will allow us to have a couple, two, three wells maybe that will um, give us that radius um, and then uh, maybe help a couple parties out. But that's kind of what we're working on right now. And it'll be alternate, it'll be away from this well field. So if this one get, gets contaminated, we'll be able to pump from another one. So if we open up a, you know, let's just say new well field A, will our current one just be completely shut down? Then? We'll never, we will never shut it down it'll, unless it'll it ever be becomes back, contaminated. Yeah. Okay, so it'd be as a backup or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the good thing about your current well field is, let's say a well goes bad, like well four right now, um, it's not our best producing well. However, you can pull it out and put a new one in, in its place. Okay. For, for, uh, Perpetually. Uh, well, six, it can go put another 101 in. You just can't drill it any deeper or make it any bigger. Okay. So contamination is the only thing really that will shut your well down unless something just gets so clogged you have to move it over a little bit. Okay. Thank you. I noticed here in the last couple of days the water pressure has been fluctuating. Is that because of the hydrant incident? No, so everything on VFDs, we have corrected a lot of our water pressure issues. But what we have to do in the meantime is operate the old high service pumps. They are much bigger. They're two, so we have three 500s in the plant to pump out to the system. Up at the old one, we have two 900s and two threes that work together. So we have 1,200 that run, and they are not on a variable frequency. So when they kick on, they're full bore. When they shut off, they shut off now. So wherever water's moving, it has to take time to flow back. Uh, so what we do is we've been kind of running those into midday so where it doesn't fluctuate people's water pressures because we have to keep using that tank to keep it fresh. So I just put in an OPWC grant to pay for about three quarters, maybe 65% of the 
of uh, changing those pumps out um, to BFDs and putting cabinets in there. So tomorrow I go to a meeting that will know if we get three bonus points to get us into that and then we'll be funded for that project. So that would start next, uh, after next July. So, yeah. I was just curious, like I said, I know the pressure was fluctuating that time. Are they working on something? And it's normally pretty it? standard about where you're at, it stays around 50, 55. But um, when we're working the old Clearwell, yeah, you might get a spike of 70 to a low of like 35. Yeah, but yeah, it's like for about the three pressure. seconds. It's about three or four seconds that we can we hit that. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Ranger. <clears throat> Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitko. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, awesome report, Mr. Kitko. Thanks for the information. Uh, moving on with the city manager report under discussion topics. So uh, first bullet point is Alley Vacation, Quarry Street. Um, we had let council know uh, at the last meeting and at the planning board meeting uh, there's some issues going on with it, potential alley vacation. So we hadn't started looking at research anything yet, but it was brought to my attention by one of the uh, citizens that are impacted to look at a certain ordinance. And when I pulled that ordinance is the city actually already vacated that alley back in 1979. The issue why it was so hard to find is because the city never recorded it back in 1979. So there's no record of it at the county level, uh, which would hopefully explain why it still shows it being there on the GIS map. So um, now to add more confusion to this, um, when you look at the diagram submitted, um, it doesn't indicate how it's split. Either someone gets 10 feet that way, someone gets 10 feet that way, or 20 feet that way, or 20 feet that way. So I talked to Jake about it. Uh, he's still doing a little bit of research. We're probably just going to go ahead and, and record it as is and then split it 50-50. Let's -50, um, just say the alley is 20 feet wide, 10 feet, 10 feet. Because um, that's normally how those things are split um, when they do vacate them. Um, so that's what we'll be moving forward with. Once we do that with the county, it is a civil dispute between those two neighbors. Because the one of the neighbors has got a fence and a pool on the other guy's property. So that's between them. Um, we have no record of the permitting from that fence or that pool. Um, the fence was installed illegally and the pool doesn't, is not fully fenced in. So that's every indication that they never got permits. So not saying they couldn't have, we just don't have record of it. Yet. We only are, keep our records for five years when it comes to those permits. Um, I still cannot find a record of any of those permits. Um, so just wanted to update council on that. If Jake has a find something out in case law that we change it up, we'll definitely shoot an email out to council, but it already has been vacated and that's what I wanted to uh, share with council. Uh, this was on last council meeting, uh, but I also wanted to bring it back again. It's a Miami County annexation. I know it's going to be a big meeting for the city. So again, preliminary plan hearing. It's a hearing only. There will be no voting at this meeting. That is August 31st, uh, 2022, right here at Smith Park Shelter House. And that starts at 630. Uh, the meeting will take action on the hearing would be September 28th. Excuse me. Also here at Smith Park Shelter House at 630 p.m. And we do have a pre-annexation agreement that is an agreement between us and the uh, develop, uh, uh, developer, not us in Bethel Township, Miami County. Uh, that is still in legal review, actually. Um, so monkeypox information I have attached, that came out from the county, um, I think late Friday or Thursday. Thank you, Fire Chief and Howie, for sending me that. So I wanted to throw it on here just in case council wanted to see that, share it with the constituents or anyone else in the public wanted to see it. But it is a fact sheet about monkeypox. And then... The other thing we have attached for the city manager report, and that's what I'm asking council to do, is you have two draft ordinances here. You have 648-112, this is tan handling. And then we have our existing chapter 850 that has to deal with peddlers. I know that came about at the last meeting about um, our codes and ordinances. So panhandling, I'm almost positive this is not in our code. If it is, this is just blown out. Jake has written these to be the strictest they can. So what we're asking council to do is research, review these, and at the next meeting, bring any um, uh, strike throughs that you want or any kind of changes and then we'll take those changes and then we'll actually put those in the form of uh, uh, ordinance at the uh, September 16th meeting. Um, so we definitely got the ball started for you guys just tell us how you want to uh, amend it and then we'll get it on for a vote for you. Chapter 1278 we did the I kind of like how this turned out actually but I would like to have maybe this week it was Janelle to make sure she is un uh, can understand the flow chart but I think it turned out very well. Um, I did have, I did send it out to three members asking for feedback. Great constructive criticism. So I went back and I looked at it. I did add a few more sentences under the action of the planning board. It is nearly impossible to put down every section in that chat, in that section because it's like eight bullet points. So it would just take up too much space and kind of defeats the purpose of the flow chart. But we have referenced in here many times referred to chapter 1278 for a detailed explanation. 
What this does is give a good overview of the flow of the process, which was the goal of the flow chart. And again, I would like to get a hold of you in the next week or two to make sure this is okay with you and it's user friendly. But also, it's, I've identified some other aspects of our code that can really benefit from doing something like this. Um, it really didn't take me all that long to do, maybe an hour, hour and a half. So I kind of want to look at other things that are maybe complicated or confusing to our citizens and then put this on a website that would be easy for them to follow. So now that we're in open session, I can ask all council members what their opinion of it is. Um, I already heard from three of you. And that would be uh, Ms. Eggleston, Mr. Lowry, and Mr. Grimm. So the remaining four of you, I'd love to have your feedback. If not, we can just move on with it, and I'll get with Ms. Zimmerman uh, here in the next week or two, and we can finalize it. Any council members have any feedback? Mr. Bridge? I, sir, I think it's fine, sir, the way you have it. Thank you. And it does refer to seven, or 1278 and the various areas in 1278, so I think it's something to monitor. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, and upcoming legislation project for council review. Still working on some of these. Employee generally section code, code update, social media policy, and DG burials policy, golf course and vehicles. City sign audit, I am going to go ahead and sign an agreement with Bruce Eggleston. He's our local guy in town. He came back with a very competitive offer to take three of our entryways sign and repaint them just to make them a little more bolder. Um, and he's going to put seasonal changes on one. One's going to be spring, fall, and winter. Um, I don't want to go too much on these entryway signs because in the next two or three, maybe four years, I will be asking council for um, significant amounts of money to actually replace these with. Don't say that. Well, they're not cheap. I, I mean, know. They're, they're, I'm, not, I'm they're not cheap. I'm not, not going to. Yeah. Significant amount of money. They I are. It'll be investment. Right now. It'll be investment. But the payoff will be greater. Um, <clears throat> there'll be less maintenance long term, and they're just a way more professional looking sign. Um, these are part of the history right now. I think we should give them a shot. I think for another maybe maybe three, four, five years. But after that, I'll be coming to you guys for stuff a little bit more um, modern and, and durable. Sure. You're talking about digital signs? For no, no, they're okay. like a fake contact. <laughs> as long as we're not going that high. If you go into like Springfield from New Carlisle, you'll see it right outside Snark from Michael Park. They have a new sign that says Springfield. It's, it's yeah. Stone. Stone. Yeah. It's nice. Very classy. I, I think they just put that in here yeah. this summer, time. sometime earlier this summer or spring. Yeah. It's it's relatively new. Program. Yep. Um, that is all the inf uh, information awesome. I have for the city manager awesome. report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge? Sir, I don't have a question. I have a comment. I think you're doing a fantastic job, sir. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I just, on, on the subject uh, of the uh, flow chart that you were putting together and to Ms. Zimmerman and the council who was okay with Mr. Bridge working on that, I just, I, mean, I think that, that that's a great thing because we had someone come to a meeting, said that they, they were confused, didn't quite understand it. So, I mean, Hopefully this will be something you can uh, use. There you go. So. I'll give you a call. <laughs> All right. Moving on to comments from members of the public. Any questions, comments, feedback, please go to the podium address and try to keep it to five minutes, please. Mayor, while he's getting up there, just so everyone knows, the change of the agenda will take place at the next meeting. There's a 15-day there's a okay. waiting period when council, when legislation is approved by council. I think I'm just <laughs> So for us to officially change it this, we'd have to mark the time that was voted on last week to make sure it was a full 15 days, so it would just err on the side of caution to do that. You okay? Yeah. Done with him? Okay. Jeff Morford, 4720 Scarf Road. Uh, as always, I'm against the housing development at Scarf and Lake. Last meeting, the mayor asked me about the years Silver Lake being open to the public and didn't that negatively affect the environment. I want to expand on that train of thought. Yes, Silver Lake was open to the public. But the lake was open for only 12 to 14 weeks a year, primarily on weekends, six to eight, hour, six to eight hours a day. That equals approximately 28 to 35 days of public exposure, only a fraction of what you're proposing. Compared to the development, which will be 300 houses, 600 plus cars, 
900 to 1,000 people, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, forever. We at the lake have open grass field parking, no asphalt parking, affecting water absorption and runoff. Over the years, we have planted over 100 trees. We never used chemicals, fertilizer, or weed killers. No weed killers were used in the swimming area. They were pulled by hand. Water testing was done several times a year. We always allow schools, universities, museums, and the Ohio Department of Natural Resources to have access to the property for their projects, evaluation, and monitoring, relying on their expertise to help guide us. We are and have always been aware of the environment and good guardians of the property and hope to continue. I would like to read a communication from Rick Gardner, the chief botanist for the state of Ohio. Thank you again for permission to survey your incredible property. I have attached a list of rare state listed species recorded from the wetlands of Silver Lake to date. I would like to come back in August. I will reach out to the dragonfly folks about visiting as well. It has to have a state listed dragonfly with its special wetland habitats. Some thoughts, his thoughts. Silver Lake is an unusual lake for its high alkaline waters. I do not know of another natural lake in Ohio that has so much fen, parentheses, and alkaline groundwater fed wetland, parentheses, around it. With other natural lakes and ponds around the state being degraded by agriculture and development, Silver Lake's importance has increased for preservation. For decades, Silver Lake has been recognized by our, our division universities and other conservation organizations as a state significant natural area worthy of being preserved for its wetland habitats and numerous rare species list attached. I got copies of this from him for all of you if you'd like them. Uh, that was from him. Uh, we have reached out to universities and environmental organizations who have visited this property over the years to send us information which might be pertinent to this issue. Next subject, pass that one. Uh, DDC management has prepared their plan, property uh, acquisition, road locations, property divisions, building size, shape, density, property evaluations, environmental studies to protect, themse to protect themselves, not the environment, doing their job as a property housing developer. The city of New Carlisle is doing, doing their job by having meetings with Bethel Township, road studies, your normal bi-weekly meetings with open floor to the community. And now following the R-PUD1278 schedule, which includes letters, rezoning signs, notification, newspapers, and whatever else is regulated. Along with two special hearings, not your normal bi-weekly scheduled city council meetings. All this in a timeline regulated by law. We as citizens of the community are against this development, are doing our job as well. Those of us against the development have used the open floor for comments to voice our concerns. Thank you for these opportunities. We hope your investigations and our list of issues will lead you to vote no. But we are also doing our job. We have organized and are prepared the city council votes to accept this development and rezoning of the property from agricultural to residential. We are fully prepared to initiate and circulate a referendum petition. Have this issue put on the ballot, campaign, and vote to stop this development. Through this process, which I think is very doable, the New Carlisle voters can personally make the decision on the future of New Carlisle. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Yes, sir, thank you. Please. You know, once he go ahead and start after he passes these out. Yeah. Um, Just wait. No, no, you're fine. Just wait till he's done, so we can all hear you. Oh, 
Janelle. Okay. Name, Jan Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Princess Drive. Um, I did see on there that they had a little video yeah. of the type of government under planning, maybe. I don't know. I just accidentally came across it. It was a little video telling about the types, two types of government and the types that we have. And I noticed it did say that the council creates the vision. And now I forget what the other one was. I should have brought my notes up. Um, I should have got that. And then it said that the planning part was controlled by council, but they they did whatever you authorized them to do, but the council was in charge of coming up with things. Maybe I should get my notes and look at it. So did you know that video was on there? I'm not sure what video you're referring to, to be honest. Yeah. It was just a little cute cartoony video of the two different types and the type that we had. So the video that, that tells the difference between a strong mayor form of government and a strong mayor manager form of government? Okay. You see it on our city website? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where it's at. Okay. Yes. And it was very interesting, but it did say, though, that council was in charge of creating the vision and that they were in charge of making the plans and that the administration was in charge of administering that then. And I just thought that at that one meeting, you guys were talking about maybe for in the future changing the lot sizes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Randy said that you couldn't do that. It had to go through something else first. It starts in the planning board. Yeah. Which if you look at the outline we made for- So why does it stay on there that council's in charge of that? Well, on that video. I, I can't speak to the video because I don't know what video it is. I've never watched it. Um, but, you know, for example, if they were wanting to change a, a parameter or, you know, whatever, a build size, whatever it may be, yeah, it'll start at the planning board. You know, they'll make their, you know, they'll do their debates, their research, whatever it may be that they feel necessary, and then they'll make their suggestion to council, and then it'll come to us and we'll make the same decision. Yes, but you guys were the one who wanted to make the suggestion of changing the lots at that one meeting, that in the future you would like to see the ordinance changed so that there was more space between the houses. We talked about that. And yeah. We mentioned that it would have to start with the planning board. So, and, I, and like I said, I, I missed the last meeting, so I don't know if they discussed it or not. I was out of town, but um, that would, it would start with them. And from what I understood, that was something they were going to be discussing here in the near future. I, I don't know, I wasn't at the last meeting. So do they have to think of the idea and bring it up? Or can you guys have the idea Go ahead. and then they do it? Uh, Mr. Zimmerman, I, <clears throat> in that meeting we was discussing the topic. One of the count, any of us council members can go to the board and, and ask them to look at that and to do their due diligence and then send it to us as a whole council to to vote on that. If the planning board does not recommend changing anything, then we as a council can't do anything because it has to come from the planning board. Any member of council or all of us could go and say, hey, we would like to have this done. What do you think? And then it would, it has to come, it comes from us to them and then from them back to us, if that makes any sense to you. We can't just as a council up here vote to change anything in the planning board's round or as far as lot sizes, we can't do that. It has to come through the planning board and they have to suggest either doing it or not doing it and then we can decide what we want to do. Does that make sense to you? Sort of, except for the fact that the video said that council makes the policy, not the planning board. We, we do make the policy, but it has to come from them. We have the final say on all policies in the city. Council does. We you have the final it. say, but do you make it? Make we, the policy. If, if an ordinance comes before us, or something from the planning board comes to us in form of an, of an ordinance, if I'm, if I'm not correct or not, on things that comes from the planning board, they make recommendations to us. They can make a recommendation. Right. They make a recommendation to us. And we as a council can either 
vote to accept the recommendation or vote to not do the recommendation. So what the, what the video says, and I have not seen, I'm just going from what you say, what you're telling us, that we do have final say so because we, we basically run the city. We, we decide what's going to happen in the city, and then Mr. Bridge administers it. Yeah, and that's what it said. Okay. Yes. So, so that's the way that works. If, if somebody on council went to the board, planning board, and said, hey, we want you to look at this, disregard any ordinances right now, we want wider blocks, and if they say, okay, I agree with you, and they send us a recommendation, and we accept that, the next step would be to have to change all of our ordinances for the lot sizes. Is that not okay. correct, Mr. Bridge? But if they don't agree with you, then you can't. Well, you can. they, they, they either give us, if they say they don't agree with us and they recommend we don't accept it, we can override that and accept it anyways. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. we can do that. Okay. Or, or if they say we want to do this and we don't agree with it, we say, no, we're not doing that. We're going to leave it the way it is. So we do have final say so on, on uh, like I said, everything in the city. And okay. Mr. Bridge, he, uh, he administers it for us. Even if, even if they recommend against it, you guys can. We can override that, yes. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Both. It has to be now that instead of a four person vote, it has to be a five person vote. Yeah, it has to be a five person vote to, to override uh, to override what they want what they would want to do. The yeah. only okay. body that can change our code is council. So your planning board, they can make the recommendation, you know. So council can pass a resolution that says, hey planning board, won't you look at this? You can make an application to the planning board to change zoning, or the planning board can just take it on themselves. So the planning board will go through their maneuvers first, and then they make a report to council, either yes or no. Council don't have to follow that recommendation at all. Okay. Like, for this one coming up, so we, if you look at that flow chart, you have the hearing for the planning board. The planning mm -hmm. board's done with their part. They made the recommendation to council because it falls within the guidelines of our code. Now, when council hears this next week, they can go, we don't like your lot size. We want to be a little bit bigger. They don't, the applicant doesn't have to adhere to that because they're fall within our minimum, but they can request it. At the end of the day, the only body that can change the code is this council. The planning board cannot change it, DCA cannot change it. They can only make the recommendations to do so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that that is, sounds good to me that even if they recommend against it and you guys still want it, you can do it because I was under the opinion that you couldn't. So thank you very much for helping to make that clear. And thank you, Randy, for making that chart. Do you, do you think it's easy to, easier to follow? Okay. We'll talk next week. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Right, anyone else? All right. Moving on. Any reports? Um, none. None. So, Ms. Burner, we'll uh, head over to your section of the woods. Resolution 2022-12R. This was introdu introduced on August 1st. Public hearing in action tonight. Resolution adopting the 2023. 2027 capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly ordinance we do. It is the one of our components of our uh, overall operating budget. Uh, so every year we get together and we do a five-year capital improvement plan, and that is what is in front of council tonight. Council, any questions, comments? When you're ready, please. All right. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passed the 7 0. We have Ordinance 2022 30. This was introduced on August 1st. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Second by Mr. Cook. Uh, an explanation that this ordinance this is also a yearly ordinance we do. This is one of the three steps that we have to do to assess property tax properties for the street lighting. Is it really needed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> Only at night time. <laughs> Only at night time. <laughs> Sir. Uh, 
on your comment on the need, I think the light's a little bright. Can you turn the switch down some, the dimmer down a little That's bit? That's the LED switch out we did. We got a lot of compliments on Who's that. Who's office has a dimmer switch in? Yeah. No one's. No, <laughs> no dimmer. <laughs> uh, Ken, is, is this uh, where the, uh, this, I didn't know this is where the citizens are assessed for the fees. Can they come to the city building and pay that fee? At, yep. And at what time? From what time periods what I'm looking for? You know, I didn't look at legal ad. It comes out, I think, tomorrow. And I want to say it's on the top of your head. <coughs> I'm probably not. Probably. September 7th through the 14th. So we, we have to give them two weeks. Yes. They have two weeks from the time it's passed. So I think around the beginning of September. So like a couple weeks after that. Okay. And they can just come to the city building and mm -hmm. say, this is where I live and how much I owe and write a check. They got a book for everything. Awesome. Yes. Yes. I just wanted to make sure people out there knew that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, else? All right, Ms. Burner. All right, Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Motion passed 7 0. Ordinance 2022 31. This was introduced on August 1st. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvement of certain public streets with the corporate within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Move your Second. Second by Mr. Barnes. And an explanation of this ordinance. This is the last ordinance that we have to do to uh, assess for street lighting. Any discussion, Council. You ready, Ms. Barnes? All right, Councilman Cook. Yeah. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Pass the 7 0. Okay, we have Ordinance 2022 32. This was introduced on August 1st. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement <clears throat> on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. So moved. Second. And explanation of this ordinance, which one we want, 33, 30? 32. 32, there it is. Uh, this is for our utility work, uh, water accounts, and bills that we need to assess for liens. This is also a yearly uh, ordinance that we do along with the street lighting assessments. Council, any questions? For this first and second one. I'm looking for that legal um, ad. Lindsay, and second was Eggleston. When you're ready, Ms. Bonner. All right, Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Pass the 7 0. We have Ordinance 2022 33. This was introduced on August 1st. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for the collection with real estate taxes. Second. And explanation of this ordinance. This is also a yearly housekeeping ordinance we do, and this is to assess the houses that we've had to uh, cut the grass on all year. Mr. Long, do you have a question? Would it be, uh, Mr. Bridge, would it be feasible on these smaller amounts to <coughs> file an action in small claims court for them? This is what the ORC says we have to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, it's a good question. I also wanted to know, if, because if you go through the court system, then it, it has more bite to them and they're more willing to pay up mm -hmm. before it gets put on the credit report. Sure. Okay. Thanks, sir. No problem. Good to call it? Please. All right. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman? Yes. Passes Sorry, seven man. zero. <laughs> um, the next three are just read only this evening. So we have ordinance 2022-35 introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 6, 2022. An ordinance amending section 280.03 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the clerk of mayor's court. We have ordinance 2022-36 introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 6, 2022. An ordinance amending section 
1460.09 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding its exterior property maintenance code enforcement. And we have ordinance 2022-37, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 6, 2022. An ordinance amending section 1460.99 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding its exterior property maintenance code penalties. Would you like me to go on to read other business? Additional city business. We have our joint government meeting, which is Monday, August 29th, 2022. It'll be held at Tecumseh High School, um, dinner at 6 p.m. Meeting starts at 6.30. City Council special meeting will be held Wednesday, August 31st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House to discuss DDC residential development plan and zoning change, hearing only, no action. City offices will be closed on Monday, September 5th, 2022 uh, for Labor Day. City Council special meeting Monday, September 26, 2022 at 6 p.m. Smith Park Shelter House to discuss charter amendments, council retreat, and cemetery operations. We have City Council special meeting Wednesday, September 28, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Smith Park Shelter House to act on the DDC residential development plan and zoning change and any other open discussion for city-related matters. Thank you very much, ma'am. Sir. Uh, found legal ad to answer the question for when people can pay in the city building. So this year we, and this is all bound by code as far as how long we have to give them to pay. Um, they're, they're always due to the uh, uh, county auditor the 15th of every September. So right now they can pay in person between the hours of 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. between August 22nd and September 7th. One more time. August 22nd through September 7th. Any other questions on that? Okay. Well, I just have one off the topic um, in your other business. I know you mentioned a little bit. Where are we at on the, when does the uh, progress of the new shelter house? That'll be next spring? Uh, I'm not holding my breath that it's going to be done this year, so probably next spring. Oh, okay. Yep. I don't have but any I mean, more. As far as all the funding and the paperwork. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Done. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any other matters, topics? Question. Sir. Just to clarify that, Mr. Britt, just to clarify that date, the year you can pay is August 22nd? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. No other discussion? So move to adjourn. No? It says executive, executive session. Oh, we'll go to executive session. Move to go to executive session. Mm -hmm. I, I did not catch that. I didn't see that. Was there a second for executive session? All right. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodolph? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Right, so we will go to executive, executive session. session. 7 30. I do not foresee us going into any other matters or business or action after we return from the session. So we'll take that five minutes and come back. All right. Sir, we to go back into regular session. Second. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. He had it on. That was on. Second. Move to adjourn. Second. Oh, she seconded it. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Ellison. Yes. Motion to adjourn is up to 7 0.